Oh my god, we need to stop driving EVs immediately. I've just been forwarded this article on Facebook from my Uncle Bob. You know, the one who knows about the lizards. And he says that tyre pollution from EVs is 1,850 times worse than exhaust emissions from cars. We've We've got it all wrong. Quick, Nikki, close down the channel. Oh, hang on. I just got a notification on my YouTube feed. It looks like it might be time for another... <coughs> FUD busting episode from my favourite channel. But first, its name was Subscribe. It was a button with letters in the square and clicks right down to there. You could click it and get notified when new videos come out. No? Or is that no? Transport Evolve's proprietary blend of fresh as a daisy news, reviews and context is supported by viewers like you and by me, Mauling Song Lyrics. If you'd like me to stop, or continue, hang out till the end of the video and I'll tell you how you can support the channel. As we've all seen as EVs have gotten more popular and eaten more and more of oil companies' divinely assigned profit margins, those self-same execs who've been promising that their companies have entirely changed and now they love the environment, oh yes they really really do, they also weirdly seem to spend a lot of their time funding studies that coincidentally suggests that EVs aren't as green as most studies clearly demonstrate them to be. If only you'll discount all that tricky pollution that fossil fuels produce when you start adding things up. And so it's certainly with a wary eye that I read headlines that exclaim breathlessly that EV tyre pollution is worse than exhaust emissions. Because gas cars have tyres. At least last I checked. So when I was sipping my cup of oolong and relaxing and a Google alert popped up that said just that, I fired up Firefox and started digging back to find the original study that led to this abundance of adjectives. And it traces back to the same organisation that produced the study back in 2020 that said a very similar thing, only at that point it was just 1,000 times worse than the output from an exhaust. So it's suddenly nearly twice as bad? Yeah, no. There's a few important things to bear in mind here, which is why you're here, isn't it? You like the caveats and the nuance. The first is, and this is a pretty important thing to bear in mind, gas cars do indeed have tyres. Diesel trucks? Also tyres. Gas motorbikes? They have tyres too. So the first thing to bear in mind is that while tyre particulates are a problem, it's not that gas cars don't produce tyre particulates, it's that they produce them as well as the noxious crud that they spew out from their exhausts. Are tyre particulates worse than exhaust gases in general? No, that isn't the argument that emissions analytics are making. So before we dig in too far, let's take a moment to talk about EV tyres. Virtually all EV manufacturers recommend installing low rolling resistant tyres. These are tyres designed to increase efficiency and to get you that extra range. Now it used to be that part of the way that tyre manufacturers reduced rolling resistance was to give you a bit less tread depth. and. That meant you usually got a little bit less life out of low rolling resistance tyres. But these days the typical lifespan of a tyre on an EV driven normally is about 60,000 miles, which is about the typical lifespan of a tyre on a combustion engine vehicle. As tyre companies have gained experience with low rolling resistance technologies, a lot more effort has been put into the design of the tread, which on a low rolling resistance tyre tends to have a continuous tread pattern intended to roll smoothly over the surface rather than dig in. In addition, low rolling resistance tyres contain different compounds. Usually these are somewhat harder with materials that are designed to keep the tyre cooler, reducing energy lost as heat. When a tyre rolls down the road, not only does the bit of the tyre in contact with the road change shape, but the sidewalls bulge a little and the area that was in contact with the road but now isn't because the tyre's rolling, that changes back to something closer to its natural shape. All those shape changes take energy. To help reduce that, low rolling resistance tyres often have harder sidewalls. 
Often to get more efficiency, EVs use thinner tyres. Some fairly extreme examples of this are the Lightyear 1 and the good old BMW i3, which sported skinny little bicycle tyres for its front wheels. But it's a common design principle and one you can see in action when you check out the impact of the range on a vehicle when you change its choice of shoes. Finally, tyre manufacturers strive to reduce the weight of low rolling resistance tyres. Reducing unsprung weight can help enormously with efficiency and fuel economy, more so than reducing the sprung weight. Which is why making big vehicles with in-wheel motors efficient is so challenging. But all those tweaks to the tyres mean that as long as you're driving reasonably and have appropriate low rolling resistance tyres, you should get a similar number of miles from the tyres in both gas and electric vehicles. So one might assume if you're getting a similar rate of wear then you'd produce the same number of particulates. Which is where things start to get interesting with the study because none of the emissions analytics testing is done on actual EVs. The statement that EVs will produce more particulates is extrapolating from a weight adjustment. The Mercedes C-Class in which all the 2022 testing was performed the 2020 test used a 2011 Volkswagen Golf, incidentally. That Merck produces a value of 8.03 milligrams of particulates per kilometre, or about half an ounce for every thousand miles. Adding 500 kilos of weight, which is roughly equivalent to a modern 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, almost doubles the tyre wear to 15.7 milligrams per kilometre, or about 0.9 ounces per thousand miles. Now while weight wise adding about 500 kilos for batteries is fair, I'm not sure how the distribution of weight would affect tyre wear because in an EV that weight is typically spread more or less evenly front to rear. I checked with emissions analytics and they clarified that the study achieved the weight adjustment by adding 500 kilos into the cabin of the same vehicle with the same driver on the same route. It's also important to note that the press release explicitly states although the statement is in a locked filing cabinet stuck in a disused lavatory with a sign on the door saying beware of the leopard, that the impact of the extra weight on particulate pollution could be negated by driving moderately and through effective use of regenerative braking in an EV. So really all this highlights is the need for a specific study that compares EVs to gas cars on particulate tyre pollution, and peeling the tyres when you pull away because of all that lovely EV talk it might be fun, but obviously when you do that you're causing more of that particulate emission than you are driving down the road at a steady 55. Also, it's important to note that while the study does include low rolling resistance tyres as used by all EV manufacturers, it doesn't separate them out. They're just included in the average. One of the challenges with separating out low rolling resistance tyres that emissions analytics cited in our conversation is that there's no formal definition of low rolling resistance tyre which makes divvying them off into their own special separate group harder. But going forward we need to define what a low rolling resistance tyre is because the chemical formulation of those tyres is different to the formulation of regular tyres and while particulates in general are a problem both directly for human health and more generally for the health of the planet, defining that will help us work out which tyres are better and which are worse for the environment. Because to be fair, some of the substances in all tyres are incredibly toxic. One example of this is N13-dimethylbutyl N-phenyl-P-phenylenediamine, or the slightly more catchy 6-PPD. This substance is used in some tyres to protect from degradation from sunlight. It's highly toxic to aquatic organisms and is released as tyres wear. And it's one of the substances that California is looking to regulate because it's so concerned about the runoff from roads and the impact on fish and other aquatic life. Okay, so the other question is, why are the numbers now so much higher than they were two years ago? Especially given the numbers from 2020 were from, quote, aggressive legal driving, driving as hard as you can legally manage, and the current study is looking at what they term, quote, normal driving. Well, that's because the 2019 and 2020 model year cars they used in this study, quote, for mid-size sports utility vehicles produced markedly lower particulates than the vehicles in the previous study, which were, it would appear, diesel instead of gasoline. Although that's not entirely clear from the original study. And yeah, I know. Okay, so all of this leaves us where? 
Well, it's disingenuous to compare the two studies, since it makes it sound like tyre wear is suddenly and dramatically getting worse. It's frustrating that Emissions Analytics chose to encourage that, as is the little rant in its press release about EV owners being annoyed by the misrepresentation that goes into not acknowledging that gas cars produce tyre pollution too, dating back to the original study, which the headlines and narrative pushed in this press release really leans into. We don't have any actual figures for EVs, which may be worse. Certainly flooring it in your plaid Tesla Model S is probably going to spit out quite a lot of tyre particulates, whereas driving gently in a Mitsubishi iMeV is not going to contribute nearly as much to particulate emissions. But then hooning around in your Toyota Supra will spit out a ton of particulates from the tyres as well as filling the air with noxious fumes. Absolutely, tyres do leave microplastics in the environment that can wash into waterways and small, fine particulates that can remain airborne, both of which can contribute to the credit card worth of microplastics we all get to ingest every week. All of that is stuff that we need to address. But we've needed to address that since Mrs. Benz first snuck out to take Mr. Benz's horseless carriage for a quick joyride. We needed to address it when the first Porsche 911s rolled off the production lines in 1964, and then often planted nose first into hedges. And we still need to address it now. It's really unclear if EV's extra weight contributes as much to particulate emissions as emissions analytics assume, because it didn't test EVs. And until it does test them, all we can say is that gas cars produce particulates too, and that tyre particulates are something we should be working on. Which is unsatisfying, I know, but sometimes that's just the way the world is. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon with more. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your thoughts below, or in our free-to-join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. If you want a more generalised news roundup of the news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles, check out our roundup show every weekend. And don't forget, we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings and reviews. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take 2, and give the bell a gentle ring to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right. They are our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Mura Binero, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton. David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tezza in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Rajin Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, John Lyons, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. Want to be part of this amazing list? You can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button below to support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links are down there. And if you're unable to support us right now financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it makes a real difference to our ad revenue and keeping the... No. No. Keeping the algorithm well fed on things other than my soul. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.